Hello, happy Friday. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going over all the books that I read for April. Um, This is my second time filming this video because I don't know what happened. The quality of the last video wasn't very good, so I decided to refilm it. I'm hoping this one is better. Let's just jump right into it because I really don't want this to take too long. <laughs> my shelf is super bare in the back, as you can tell, because I took off a lot of books for my April wrap up as well as my May TBR. So my shelves are really bare right now. If you don't look, look at Anya. Look at my little Anya octopus. <laughs> okay, let's just jump right in. I put all the books that I read into subcategories. So we're going to start with mangas and then we're going to go to series and finish it off with standalone books. So let's jump right on in. To start off with the manga section, I read Aruhara Ride Volume 5. If you guys don't know what this is about, it's just a romance manga. It's about childhood friends meeting each other again and their whole friendship and love story. I gave this specific volume a 4 star. It was really cute. It had a lot of like the jealousy trope, which is fun to read. It's, it's cute, but then it also had the misunderstanding trope, which is not so fun not so cute so there's that the only other two mangas that i read were a silent voice volume 2 volume 2 and volume 3. this manga follows a deaf girl that meets this boy when they were i think in elementary school and he bullied her really badly she transferred ever since she transferred he felt really really guilty for how he treated her so years later about when they're 18 17 18 ish he wants to go find her and he does eventually find her he's just trying to make up all the lost time by reuniting her with friends that she could have had if she stayed and he didn't bully her and overall just him trying to be kind to her and wanting to be her friend she has always been nice she continues to be super nice to him even after reuniting and he does not understand why she's so nice because of everything that he put her through. I gave volume 2 a 4.5 and then I gave volume 3 a 3.5. Volume 2 was very cute. It was the whole thing of him apologizing and finding her kind of pulled on my heartstrings. Volume 3, it wasn't much about them. It was more so him trying to make things right for her and we meet a couple people from the past that just kind of annoyed me so I <laughs> didn't enjoy reading this one as much as I enjoyed the second one because of those characters but not because of them specifically. I'm hoping to see more of them and their friendship specifically in the future volumes so yeah okay so the next section i did was standalones then the first two books aren't really standalones they're part of a series but i didn't read the entire series in the month of april so i put them in the standalone pile. The first one is Kingdom of the Wicked. It is the first book in the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. It follows a witch named Amelia whose twin sister is murdered in a really suspicious manner. So she's trying to solve her sister's murder and eventually starts using dark magic, which ultimately ends up with her meeting Wrath. Wrath is a prince of hell and one of the wicked's she has grown up hearing stories about the wicked's and obviously they're the equivalent of the devil they're evil they have these magical powers they're super strong and they align with the seven sins pride lust envy all of that and amelia meets wrath he tells her that he's on her side he wants to solve her sister's murder just as much as she does because it affects him and his mission so she doesn't believe him but they end up working together trying to solve her sister's death it becomes a whole bigger plot than just murder trying to save the world like all fantasy books <laughs> i gave this book a 3.5 it wasn't bad and it wasn't great that's my overall opinion on it like i wouldn't reread it but i enjoyed reading it i like the main character amelia i really like wrath i think they are well written and enjoyable to read i wish wrath would be a little less serious and a little more fun but it's fine i am gonna continue the series the second book is on my may tbr and maybe i'll read the third one depending on how much time i have left or if the second one is really just that good. The next one that is in the series but I didn't read it all together was Heart of the Sun Warrior. This is the second book in the Celestial Kingdoms duology. The first book is called 
the daughter of the moon goddess. It's by Su Lin Tan. It is a retelling of Chinese folklore about the moon goddess. It follows immortals. It's kind of like the Chinese version of heavenly beings. There's not much I can say about this book without spoiling the first one. So all I can really say is that it follows a girl named Xin, and it is a story about corruption and love and family. And she is powerful enough to save her kingdom. Yeah, sounds about right. If it sounds a little dull, in my opinion, it was a little dull. I gave the book a 2.5 star because I just, it wasn't for me. Ultimately, I think it was just the writing style. It wasn't my cup of tea. If you like really fast pace and you don't care about diving deep into characters, you would probably enjoy this book. For me, I can't enjoy a plot or a story without actually liking a character. That's just how I felt for this book. The story itself, the characters, they were all very flat to me. I didn't find any of it very interesting and I don't know. I did. I just didn't really enjoy it that much. Here's the best way I can describe it. Reading that book and reading spark notes on the book, we could probably describe the book the same way. Like our knowledge on the story would probably be the same. So the rest of the books in this category are standalones. First one is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and obviously the story follows Evelyn Hugo. In the beginning of the book, we meet Monique Grant. She is a writer for a magazine company, and one day, Evelyn Hugo says that she wants to do an interview, and the only person that she wants to write her article is Monique. Now, Monique is really confused by this because they've never met before. They don't have any type of personal connection, so why did Evelyn pick her, and how did Evelyn Evelyn even come to know Monique. That is a mystery all in itself that you learn at the very end, but this whole book kind of goes through Evelyn's entire life because Evelyn is telling her entire life story Monique to write. It is so interesting. I think this is the perfect book for you if you are in a book slump. It is so fast paced and it's so, I wouldn't say fun to read, but interesting to read. The chapters are not long. I was flipping through super quickly and realizing I would finish a chapter and be like, oh my god, just one more. Just one more. It's also a really empowering feminist book, so if you like that, I recommend. I give this book a four star. Then I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a story about two French sisters during World War II. There's so much that happens in this that I feel like I can't articulate a synopsis better than the synopsis in the back, so I'm just gonna read that to you and then we're gonna talk about it. With epic grace and powerful insight, best-selling author Kristen Hanna captures the epic panorama of World War II and illuminates an intimate part of history seldom seen, the woman's war. The Nightingale tells the story of two sisters and separated by years and experience by ideals, passion, and circumstance, each embarking on her own dangerous path towards survival, love, and freedom in German-occupied war in France. A heartbreakingly beautiful novel that celebrates the resilience of the human spirit and the durability of women. It is the novel for everyone, a novel for a lifetime. And I think that is perfectly said. It starts off with us meeting an elderly woman, we don't know who it is, and then it jumps back into time, back into World War II. It follows these two sisters. One is a mother, her trying to survive as her husband is drafted for the war. The other one is younger. She is rebellious for the time and she wants to fight against the Nazi Germanys. But obviously back then women didn't get drafted, women didn't go fight in the war physically, but she wanted to do something to help the cause. We also follow her as she kind of supports the French and the ally forces. It's a fascinating read. It's so fast paced. The first time my friend and I sat down, we read 250 pages because it was just so good. I cried multiple times and then I boohoo cried at the very end. When I tell you I screamed reading... <laughs> I didn't scream, but I, w I yelled. Um, at the very end, I was FaceTiming my friend while we were reading this together, and I was crying already, and things just kept coming. It wasn't one thing that I cried about, it was multiple things, and it just kept being thrown at me, and oh my god, it was so painful that I actually yelled, enough, like, enough, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> but I think it does a really good job in telling a story about how you grow during the times of war. I gave this a 4.5. I love this. I recommend this wholeheartedly. The next one is also really sad and that's You've Reached Sam. This is a book about Julian Sam and Sam is dead. 
Yeah? You want to read this? You want to be in pain? Yeah, you should read this. I enjoyed it. Sam passes away in the very beginning of the book and it follows Julie through her grief. One day, Julie calls Sam because she just wants to hear his voice. She misses him and he suddenly picks up. Now, this is weird, obviously, because he's dead, so he shouldn't be picking up his phone. They talk and she works through her grief of losing a loved one and I think this is a really beautifully written book. A lot of people can relate losing someone you love whether it's family or a significant other so this really pulled on my heart. It made me tear up a lot. It made me cry at the end as well and I gave this book a 3.5. There are some moments that I found Julie to be a little annoying but the poor girl is in grief. Like, she's sad. You should never judge the way someone grieves. So, it's okay, Julie. I understand. People do things very differently when they're not mentally stable. So, the last book in the standalone section is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Oh. This is a Korean retelling of a folklore about the sea god and the sea god's bride. This follows our main character named Mina, who sacrifices herself in place of her brother's true love. Now, why do they have to sacrifice themselves? Because in her village, in this world, they believe that in order to appease the sea god and not have natural disasters, floods, and just have a good year is by sending him a bride every single year until that bride sticks, basically. Until that bride is the one that breaks the curse. And this year specifically, the girl meant to be sacrificed was Mina's brother's fiance and seeing how sad her brother it was she jumped into the sea and sacrificed herself she's taken into the spirit realm where she meets the sea god she finds out that he's under a curse and asleep and that is the reason why things are happening in the human world the way they are so she goes on this journey meets demons spirits gods goddesses in hopes of breaking the curse so her family can live happily ever after the best way i can describe this book and how they mentioned it is perfect for fans of Spirited Away, I think the author's writing style and world building is super similar to Spirited Away. It feels very whimsical and it is very YA. If you are looking for a cozy fantasy read, this is the perfect book. It is super easy to read. I gave this book a 3.5. The last section that I have are series that I read in April and I read two series and the first one being the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I read all three for a reading vlog. If you want to check that reading vlog out, it's going to be up here. One of these. Okay. Anyways, they're like glossy, so they're super slippery. I'm sure most of you know what the story is, so I'm just gonna go over it really briefly. Our main character, her name is Alina, and she has this powerful dormant magic that could save the world, save her kingdom, but she didn't know she had it until she was thrown into a dangerous situation. This is a battle of corruption and betrayal, lots of betrayal, but also gaining a found family and that she finally belongs somewhere. Two reasons why I read this series and one being that I wanted to watch the show on Netflix and then the other main reason that I wanted to read the Six of Crows duology. I know you don't have to read this one, but I wanted to get the world building and everything before I started that. I recommend the series. I really enjoyed it. I gave the first one a four star, the second one a 3.5, and then the third one I gave a 4.25. I enjoyed the third one the most because obviously the character development is coming full circle and the friendship and the group of people she found throughout the series all kind of tie in here. The story, the plot, the people so good. I really enjoyed this third one. Rarely ever boring. There are some slow parts throughout the series but I mean I think that's kind of inevitable sometimes but I really do recommend the series if you haven't read it yet. There are a lot of plot twists in this so if you like plot twists and betrayal this is the series for you. The only other series that I finished for this month, wow, these books are heavy, oh my god, was the Nightborn duology in the Crown of Nyaxia world. These are the first two books of the series. I put them in the finish the series category because the Nightborn duology is only two books and the next four books are gonna follow the other vampire houses, so I kind of 
I just said this was a series in its own. And this follows our badass main character, Araya. She is a human girl adopted by the Nightborn King. She is raised basically to fear her weakness as a human compared to a vampire. She is tired of being human and seen as prey, so she joins the Kajari, which is kind of like a Hunger Games-esque competition where people from all three vampire houses are able to join and only one person is able to win. It's obviously a tournament to the death. The winner gets a wish from their goddess, Nyaxia herself. Our girl joins it and she meets Rain. There is romance in it. I don't think I qualify to determine the spice level, so I'm not going to rate the spice le level, but in my opinion, there is spice. I'm not going to rate it because some of you might come for me saying like, oh, it's not that spicy or oh my god, it's so spicy. So I'm just going to leave it. It's very action packed. I gave this a four star. I really, really enjoyed it. The second one, I can't go too deep into what it is, obviously, without spoiling the first one. Just know that this is also very action-packed. It has a lot of information, and it never bored me. I enjoyed reading all 600 pages of this bad boy, and I gave this one a 4.5 star. The only reason why it wasn't a 5 star is because I think that because it's only two books, I didn't get enough time to really feel attached to the characters. For example, books like Akhtar and Throne of Glass, there are so many books in the series that I have so much character development and character background for me to really love them. With that said, Carissa Broadbent does a really good job. Her writing is magnificent. She does a really good job with world building and character building. I love Araya. I love Rain. I love another character that you meet in this series, but I'm not obsessed with them. I'm very close to. I think once I get more books in the Nyaxia series, I will become obsessed. This is a really fun read. If you enjoy heavy fantasy, vampires, betrayal, romance, action, and a really badass female main character, I highly recommend this book. If you love Throne of Glass and you love the main character for Throne of Glass, this is for you. This is for you. So those are all the books that I read for April. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys had a really good reading month and I will see you in the next video. Bye!